Connor, don't change the channel. No channel serving. Have you ever gonna show me some moves in the ground grappling system? You ready, Polio? See you again. Hi guys, back again. I have a, a big friend of mine, Kendo Gu. He's a gold medal in Brazil, world champion. And then let's try to show you some ways competitions go in rules. Um, first, let's start like a judo. You grab the collars like this. And then any time you take down, some shoot to the leg, push take him down. Oh, flips like this, throws like this. Take here as two points. Any take down in the legs or throws complete like this, like judo throws, two points. So basically, I'm going to grab one leg and take him down here. What's going to happen? You're going to cross the legs, please. And then come to come in guard position. When I'm trying to pass this guard, and then come basically that's the move I'm going to do. I pass the guard, sneak my shoulder, get the collar, I pass the guard. And the time I do this, chest to chest, that's two points. Two, two, two points. Three points, I'm sorry. So I got a hands in the collar, knee in the belly, that's two points. So I slip my knee, he mounts me, that's a four point. So turn his back, and then I put my hooks, and shoot him like this. And then I keep my hooks, that's, and I put my both hooks like this, that's a four point. Any, any submission, the fight finish right there. This, this, this. Any kind of advantage as count. When people take advantage like him. One second, lay down here, can we go, please? Somebody like this, he for some reason he holds my collar. Yeah, you turn the fight like this, this is called advantage. And then any turn fight like this, that's two advantage. Okay? You cannot hold inside the gaze. And it holds inside the gaze, inside the pants. You cannot hold inside. You can go outside and grab like this. Whenever inside the gaze. Food locks permit me down second candle. Food locks. Basically you can do it like this. Okay? It's permit. Whenever you never do uncle locks. That's not permit. Okay? because it can hurt the knee. The food locks are there. I only can turn outside. So I'm turning inside, can get an in his knee. This can be disqualified for that. That's what you can see. The rules, so I push the, push the point. If the point is big count. So position is very dangerous. It, uh, as I think it's very dangerous. Positions, knees on the bellies, mounting positions, holding from behind. That's the idea. Uh, count the points, prevent the points, because you got a better position. That's positions that can be very dangerous. 
in these nets like this or in street fights work the same way. One more time. Thanks, Kendall. Congratulations for Brazil. You got it. Thanks, my friends. Thanks. That's the man who has a gold medal from Brazil and from Hawaii, it tastes very good. That's qualified Brazil, first place in the world. It's Hawaii, the second place in the world, the more powerful jiu-jitsu in the world. Thanks a lot, Kendall Gu, one more time. Thanks. I'm here for Gracie Jiu-Jitsu today, and I'm talking to one of Helson Gracie's top heavyweight competitive students, Kendall Gu. Kendall, how are you? It's nice to see you. Thank you. Well, we're going to talk about this. I want to, I want you all to see this. Check this. Check this medal out. This thing weighs a ton. I want. We're going to talk about uh, your competition in Brazil. So let's talk about first leaving Hawaii and going to Brazil. What was the flight like? Uh, flight in itself was. Quite an adventure. I think if you add up the amount of days I traveled, it was pretty close to the amount of days I was actually in Brazil. Wow. Okay. So when you finally got there, did you experience jet lag? Were you tired? Um, I think it probably didn't hit me till about two days later, and thankfully that was after everything was That was, was after finished. the tournament. So when you got to the tournament, okay. So you got to the tournament. How'd you feel at that time? Well, I had traveled from Honolulu uh, about two days two and a half days before I went to San Francisco, San Francisco to New Jersey, had a 15 hour layover in New Jersey. And then I flew down from Jersey to Sao Paulo and then to Rio. And wow. then got in Thursday and I found out from Helsin that I had to fight on Friday, so. What a journey, wow. Okay, so tell us about your competitions. How many fights did you have? I had, I think it was a total of four, four or five matches. Okay. Um, they're all tough competitors. I was in the open weight, which the weight classes are a little different in Brazil. Okay, so you're like a super heavyweight, right? Super, super heavy. So how does that compare to open weight? Does it mean you um, fight all different weights, or? I think, for me, it was probably harder being in the super, super weight, because you're facing people that are all big. When you're in the open weight, or they call it an open weight division, um, you face little people, medium-sized people, large people, so you can kind of you know, take it easy at times. Okay, so let's let's go through it match by match. Tell me about your first match and, and what were your winning techniques? Um, basically, the mentality in tournament jiu-jitsu, well, I find is it's a lot different from just free training or anything else. I mean, you've got to go into the met mentality of trying to score, not trying to get taken down. You're trying to stay up and fight the match and try to get quick points. I think the Brazilians have really refined it you know, sport-wise, where it's a matter of, it's not a matter of submissions or win wins by large points, it's a matter of advantages or one or two points which determine I winners. see. So did you win by great margins or were they very close matches? They were pr pretty close. I've won uh, by as few as one point to maybe at most four or six points. Did you have any submissions within these four matches? Uh, Came close to one match, but uh, time ran out. So I take it they were very tough competitors. Pretty tough. Okay, so let's talk about the other two medals you have there. Uh, it's uh, the Jiu-Jitsu of the Gracie tournaments, which I understand one is coming up, which I, you will compete in, I'm sure. So tell me, uh, those are gold medals as well. Can you talk about those? Um, one of these is from uh, our fifth annual Gracie International last uh, October 26th, which I took the open weight division, gold medal. And uh, another one here is from last year's uh, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu State Tournament, which I took uh, first in my weight division, first in the open weight division. They can't stand up to him. Here in Hawaii, this man is number one. And there's another reason for it. You also played college ball for UH. Is this correct? Yeah, I played uh, five years of college football. Five UH. years? Okay, so uh, did you have any dreams about going to the pros at all? Oh, uh, yeah, actually. I. I signed a free agent contract with the New Orleans Saints, but I, after a 
a little while there. I just decided. You know, it was Mike Ditka, wasn't it? You didn't want to. No, I was gone before him, <laughs> thankfully. I'm only kidding. Okay, so tell us, uh, what are your plans? Uh, you plan on following up with jujitsu? You plan on being a jujitsu instructor, or you just want to compete? What would you like to do in the sport, um, representing Mr. Gracie? Ultimately, I'd like to become an instructor. I think that's the the ultimate level of jiu-jitsu. Anybody can fight and anybody can become a good fighter, but if you can be a great instructor, I think everything else falls in place, really. Well, that's fantastic. Everybody, I'd like to say thank you, Mr. Kendall Guru, fantastic champion here in Hawaii, which is coming up in jiu-jitsu, soon to be number one. Thank you very much. Hi, guys. You're back again. I'm going to show you some moves to get the Jason, Todd, friends from the school. And I'm going to show you some moves. Basically, you guys are very, very familiar to these things. FC street positions and aggressions in street to points. First, let's show you here. That's, that's, that's familiar position. Somebody try to rush to the legs. And then all you can see, he block the arms, use his knee. Bring again, please. Yes, and then he uses his knee. Okay? Okay. The second move, when the guy comes close and headlock. Stop, guys. What you can see, he try punch, and then he has a block, this hand. He, when he try to take his arm out, he completely the hold from behind. And then he block, his punch continue. The second hand go to the wrist, and then he's going to step back, look up to open space, take his head off. And then he go with his arm from behind. Okay? Let's do it one more time, guys. He block. Yes, he hold the arm tight. He step up. He come the arm and walk from behind. Thank you, guys. And then the third move, when somebody going straight for the front, he block, he walk to the side, he step inside again, or you can see throw, knee and the belly, he can strike, or you can use the simple arm lock. Okay, let's do it one more time, guys. Slow, please. Slow motion, yes. He block, he runs to the side, you're gonna flip him up. Yes, knee in the belly, he can strike, and then he completed the arm lock too. Okay, okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Don. Thanks again, guys. Go to a clinch quickly, he does not want to get hit. And the reverse punches and thrust punches are really strong from Ichihara. Is Ichihara in trouble if he's on the ground? Oh, definitely. Definitely. And he's down. Yes, he he's is. He's down on the ground. Yes. The Watch Schwartz will take his ground. left leg and go over the top. There it is. Ichihara will move or roll or try to get over. Poise will just go with him on top of him like a little crab. He'll just stay right on top of him. Man, you talk about a game face. Poise has it. He does. He does. Is probably going to want to end this up pretty quickly now. He doesn't How want to sit. Well, he could do an arm lock really easily right now, but I think he's going to let him turn and go for the choke. Here it is. He's let them choke. Yeah. Hi, guys. Here again, one more time. So, we got Kelly Rodriguez. She's going to help us in some moves, self defense. What you guys can see. You. How much easy jiu-jitsu work for women? First thing, he's gonna hold the neck like this, press the neck, he's gonna hold my elbow, he's gonna step behind, he's gonna hit his base, bend her knees, she flip me over, here. Yeah, I'm gonna lock it right there. Boom. Do my time, I'll tell you gonna do full speed. move here. Somebody try to hold her hair. Just like this. Okay. We'll see you again. She hold my wrist. Big step back. She pull me together. And then she press my arm. Very good. Okay. Uh, the next move. Like somebody hold the collar. In position like this, she turn his wrist. She bend my wrist down, she grab the wrist, bend my wrist down, she step behind, yes, and then she keep turning the wrist. 
taking it down. You keep turning the wrist. Okay. So you just relax in here. Yes. Things happen a lot in the streets. Somebody comes from behind. He tries to surprise her. She don't know what's going on. A guy walks, strong guy, try to lift her up. She make a hook. Come to base. Hold my heels. She push me back, and then she sit me right up my knee. Go. Cool. Like you guys can see, that technique can be dangerous. You're not doing correctly. Please, for more information, call 738-0404, the mail enders, and the screen. Thanks a lot. See you guys. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. I sure did. And you know you can learn a lot by watching that show. But don't forget to watch next time because we're going to be showing clips of the competition of the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu tournament here in Hawaii. Now don't change that channel because Dave Sampson's coming up with Sampson's Taekwondo. Today.